Um, look, there's no simple one thing that governments need to do to diversify away from oil. They need to first understand why they want to, whether it's for jobs or whether it's for other reasons. Uh, it differs from country to country, and countries have different possibilities for diversifying. They need to look at what successful countries have done. Uh, they have managed their economies reasonably well from a macroeconomic point of view. They've had reasonably open policies and they've tried to improve their institutions to encourage private investment. Because if you don't do that, the investment is just not going to come in into the sectors that we want to invest. Some countries have used targeted policies. Um, in general, the targeted policies are risky because often they get captured. Um, but the countries that have succeeded have managed to maintain some independence and to manage these policies quite well. So there are a lot of lessons that countries can draw from other countries, countries like Malaysia or Indonesia or Chile, uh, which have done things that have encouraged new businesses to start up in the non-resource sectors. Um, what about the question of when are countries able to do this? What are the sorts of factors that have helped countries to do this? Um, first of all, these countries have usually had uh, some long-term goals. They've had the goals of economic development, they have had goals of social stability. And they have seen that the development of new economic sectors and growth and jobs are very important for that. Um, they've had um, reasonably well-functioning um, technocracies, they've had stable, stable technocracies, um, they've, they've had good macroeconomic management, they've avoided serious exchange rate overvaluations by devaluing at the right time. Um, they've had, in very different political uh, situations, they've all had quite good and stable technocracies, they've had people with a long-term view, and that has been very helpful. Um, and they've, they've also had constituencies which have helped them keep their policies on track for a long period. In Chile, for example, copper is the major export, uh, but other, other activities like wine, uh, salmon, uh, the agro-business are also very important. And these producers know that if the state uh, starts a huge boom on the basis of copper revenues, that they are going to be hurt. So they provide some kind of balance in terms of the political configuration so that the economy doesn't go too far off the rails. So those kind of things are all important. And I think it's also very important that the, 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 the direction of the economy, that there's some kind of consensus on this among citizens, that people quite widely understand uh, what the risks are, what the opportunities are. Often populations don't understand. We see this now in Nigeria with the question of fuel subsidies, a very important question, um, but maybe one that is not widely understood fully by the population. So educating the population is really important too.